Welcome back, everyone. Now that the caffeine is in the system, can we see some energy in the room, guys? Woo! Because I am the pilot today, and I'm going to take you 6,000 kilometers away into the magical land of India. So what you have to do is, on the count of three, shout out the first thing that comes to your mind when you think India. Ready? Okay, so let me count. Fasten your seat belts. One, two, three, go. Again, more, come on, keep it going, keep it going, guys. People, that's good. I take that as a compliment. Bollywood. Spice, Bollywood, I love that. And now, guys, give a huge round of applause to yourself once. Thank you for being here. And because right now, just sitting thousands of kilometers away, you created an image of a huge country like India based on your perception. Now, I'm not going to tell you that your perception is right or it's wrong, but I'm going to tell you that what we just did, it is going to be the future of your company, perceived by your culturally diverse team members. So be prepared for that. Diversity can mean a lot of things. But today, I'm going to talk specifically about cultural diversity a topic so personal and so complicated that leaders like us and the companies, they tend to totally ignore it. But today, I'm going to empower you with tools that will help you bring innovation in your companies with the help of cultural diversity. But before we go further into the diversity, let's take a look at the status of Nordics in the business. As per the media, we are facing a huge challenge of skill gap. And have you ever heard any company growing without employees? No, because it's not possible. You need skilled employees. And with an amazing rate of immigration in the Nordics, we are already in favor. But the one thing that you need to have is open your mind, open your arm, and embrace the cultural diversity because it's going to improve the innovation in your companies by almost 20%. But as you are handed sooner or later the sword, the double-edged sword of cultural diversity, why I say it a double-edged sword? Because it's all also going to destroy you. As you can see, all the multicultural teams, they underperform in the beginning. Only when they get a well-managed team can they produce results that can blow your mind. You can never get it through homogeneous teams. So now you have the choice, take it or leave it, but if you take it, and lead, because that's what leaders do, isn't it? You will find yourself something like this, juggling yourself like an adventure sport. Language barriers leading to miscommunication, cultural differences leading to conflicts, and so on. But I'm going to give you five steps that I created based on my six years of experience working and leading multicultural teams and I call them the five pillars of inclusion. Let's start with self-awareness. So if you want to give something important to others, you first need to know it yourself. So first thing that you got to do is observe. Observe yourself. What kind of things you know about your own culture? What is your perception about somebody else's culture? The stereotypes and learn, is that true? Learn what about your colleagues, your subordinates, from where they come from, what are their beliefs? And then listen, listen to what they have to say, not what you are talking about, but what they have to say. And keep it going, guys, because 
it's, it's not a one-day job. You have to make it your everyday job. My colleague, Anita, I changed the name because she requested. She was handling a team in Sweden, and she was always telling me that, Priyanka, you know, I think my team is always conspiring against me. It was funny, right? But what happened was, each time in the team meeting, suddenly some people would start speaking in Swedish, leaving the whole team, even the leader, totally confused. But Anita is a very smart leader. So she would calmly and politely change the topic in English over and over again until the team members get a hint that it is essential to use a common workplace language. Because only when you understand what people are saying around you or joking about can you actually feel a part of the tribe, can you actually feel included. And apart from the spoken language, how many of you here have uh, ever found a Chinese or an Indian accent difficult? Anyone? Yeah. So Anita was having the same problem with Finnish English. We call it rally English. I think it's called in that way, I don't know. <laughs> so she made sure that whatever goals and tasks and team meetings and updates they have is written down somewhere. Written down so that there is no misunderstanding and there is no excuses of misunderstanding. And um, a very important step you can do to improve like the language uh, skills is have language cafes. So what you can do is call your team members on a, some coffee break and share each other's language skills. It's a great team building activity anyways. And when you talk about written language, email etiquettes, it's totally different around the world. In the East, we use please, dear, thank you. And when I work here, I often get replies like, Oh, go. <laughs> so you need to make sure that people are not offended. And you need to do an email 101 with them, just so quickly they know what do you mean by your emails. OK. So communication is not just about language. It's about sharing your thoughts, your ideas, your information. And you, won't, you will be surprised by the number that 69% of the people, of the managers, they have troubles communicating with their subordinates. Many of us may be over here as well. So uh, Tina was going through the same phase of um, having difficulties in managing her team. And uh, always the result looked like as if she has given the task something like this. The results were so incredible that she could not believe what is going wrong. The communication. You need to have a great communication environment within the cult company. Not just between you and your employees, but also between the people, among the team members. And great ways to start conversation is uh, social gatherings. I love food. I think a lot of people here like food. So food is a really great icebreaker. So organizing potluck lunches in your teams once in a month or even in a week if you have that kind of time. And ask your team members to bring in different kind of their favorite food from their culture. It's not just great in uh, uh, having an icebreaker discussion, but also you will get to know each other so well. Go to team parties. Who doesn't like team parties? They are free, aren't they? And after the team has a good communication you have initiated, make sure that you are having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your team members regularly. It can be mentoring sessions, feedback sessions, or just a general discussion about how they are doing in the company. When we have touched the tip of the iceberg, we go into dealing with culture, decoding culture. 
it's very important to have a long-lasting, sustainable team environment. And how you can do is to have cultural awareness sessions where people can know, get to know about each other's beliefs and each other's uh, ideas and thoughts. And they're mostly on the same page to avoid conflicts. Also, knowing about self-culture is one thing, but knowing about company culture, that what a company wants, what it expects, what are its values, is also a very important thing. And then celebrate. Celebrate everyone, every festival, because it's a great way to bring people together. This is a great exercise I like. I am, but I'm not. Uh, it's one of the exercises to do cultural um, awareness. So I am an Indian, but I'm not a snake charmer, for example. <laughs> I'm a Finn, but I like small talk. <laughs> So you can go tomorrow at your work and try this out, and you will be surprised about how much you learn about your employees and subordinates. And even after that, you feel that you have conflicts in the team, do not avoid. Try to initiate a conversation between the conflicted teams and revisit the common goals with them. Because a common goal reduces the chances of conflicts a lot. And at the end, have patience. Have patience because, you, because you're going to create a team, you're in a process that's going to be super innovative and giving you high productivity. Yes, and that's going to be your dream team. Who doesn't want that? So I give you a challenge that drop your ignorance right here today and take these five pillars with you and be a leader who wants to grow who wants their team to grow and take them together to make the company innovate and have a sustainable growth. Until then, be legendary. And thank you everyone over here for joining and also on the live stream. Namaste.